Richard bought some bookmarks and gave half of them to Paul. Paul bought some stickers and gave half of them to Richard. Then Richard gave seven bookmarks to his sister and found that he had one over nine as many bookmarks as stickers left. Paul gave 12 stickers to his younger brother and found that he had one over six as many bookmarks as stickers left. Part A, how many stickers did Paul have in the end? And part B, how many bookmarks did Richard buy? All right, so let's break down this question into several smaller parts and let's interpret what each part means. All right, so the first two sentences actually is a fancy way of telling you something actually very simple. Okay, when they say that Richard bought some bookmarks and gave half of them to Paul, this just means that Richard and Paul have the same number of bookmarks because Richard bought some and share half. That means equally, share equally with Paul. All right, and uh, the same can be said for stickers, all right? So Paul bought some stickers and gave half of them to Richard, all right? So in other words, what the question wants to say is Paul and Richard have the same number of stickers as well, okay? So then the question says that Richard gave seven bookmarks to his sister and found that he had one over nine as many bookmarks as stickers left. Okay, so here I can express the question. This relationship, one out of nine, one over nine. All right, this fraction, I can read, I can express it in ratio. Ratio is the most clear form of proportion because you know exactly how many units are bookmarks and how many units are stickers. All right, so we will give it a, a heading of the Richard because these are the proportion of Richard. All right, so there's one out of nine as many bookmarks as stickers. So for bookmark is to stickers, the ratio is one is to nine. All right, so we have the ratio for Richard, okay? But here you need to take note that Richard actually gave seven bookmarks away. So the bookmarks that Richard has are actually lacking seven. Okay, so we will just write minus seven for the bookmarks to remind us that the bookmarks are lacking seven because Richard gave seven bookmarks to his sister. All right, so now we are right here. All right, so every step of the way, we change the English story to a mathematical expression. In this case, we use a ratio. Okay, so this allows us to know exactly all the clues and keep track of all the clues in the question rather than having to reread the question many times. Okay, so in, in math, you have to display all your information conveniently and systematically, okay, by using ratio, using models, using equation, whichever is most relevant. Okay, so now we read on further. Paul gave 12 stickers to his younger brother and found that he had one over six as many bookmarks as stickers left. Okay, so here, you realize something is that Richard gave seven bookmarks to his sister. So Richard did not touch his stickers, right? All right, on the other hand, Paul gave 12 stickers to his younger brother. So Paul's stickers are lacking 12. But Paul did not touch his bookmarks. Okay, so this is a very important clue. Okay, so let's write a ratio for Paul. Okay, for Paul, his bookmarks is two stickers. All right, they said, um, the question said he had one over six as many bookmarks as stickers left. Okay, so bookmarks will be one unit, stickers will be six units. Okay, now I have to take note, okay, that the stickers of Paul is lacking 12. All right. So what you can see is that Richard's sticker is the original amount of stickers because he did not touch his stickers. Okay, so uh, Richard's sticker, stickers are the original amount of stickers. All right. Paul, on the other hand, did not touch his bookmarks. So this one, this one unit represents the original amount 
of bookmarks. All right, um, that both Paul and Richard has. Remember, they have the same number of um, stickers and bookmarks as for, at first, because this part, the first two sentences of the question, tells us that at first they have the same amount of bookmarks and the same number of stickers as well. Okay, so here, when we are talking about a before and after concept, okay, when we are talking about two ratio, usually we think about before and after concept. We want to see whether, is it the bookmarks unchanged? Is it, um, if one of them is unchanged, we can use them to equate the ratio, all right? We can use them to cut the ratio into smaller pieces so that the ratio will have relationship with one another. Okay, right now, the, there is no relationship between the ratio here and the ratio here, okay? Because um, there is nothing that is unchanged. Usually, we use an unchanged quantity to cut the ratio into the same size units, okay? So, um, the bookmarks changed, okay? The bookmarks here is actually more, less, fewer than here. So the bookmarks changed. The st stickers also changed because the stickers here for Richard is more than the stickers for Paul. All right, the total also changed and the difference also changed. So everything changed. In such a scenario, everything changed. Okay, the default method will be to use units and parts. Okay, what does it mean to use units and parts? It's basically using algebra. All right, uh, you acknowledge that there is no easy way to cut these units here so that they can, they can become comparable to the units here. All right, so if you have no easy way to cut the units, then you acknowledge that there are different types of units. All right, so you can label either one units and either, uh, you, can, you, you, can, you can say Richard's one are units. You can say Paul's units are actually parts. It doesn't matter who you, you assign as units and parts, okay? It, it doesn't make um, any difference. Okay, so here, when you're using units and parts, you will need two equations. The magic number is two, two equations, okay? So how do you form the equation and what are the rules that you must follow to form equation? Okay, first of all, like I've said, you need two equations, all right? The first requirement is that you need two equations. The second requirement is that um, you avoid negative numbers. It can be done if you use negative numbers, but you will make it a lot more complicated because negative minus negative numbers give you positive numbers. Well, you haven't learned that in primary six officially, so it's better to avoid that. And the third, point is to simplify whenever possible, okay? Whenever we simplify, our equation become way easier to deal with, okay? So you want to change the equation is a lot easier, okay? So following these three rules when doing units and parts, we will form two equations, all right? So you can see that um, Richard stickers is untouched because the question said that he gave seven bookmarks to his sister, but Richard did not touch his stickers. So this nine unit is also the original amount Paul has at first. Okay, so now look at Paul's sticker. It is six parts, but it is actually 12 fewer than nine units. Okay, so we could have, so the equation that we could have formed is to say um, six parts, we can say nine unit minus 12 equals to six part, okay? But that wouldn't be a good equation because like I've said, it has a negative number in it. Rather than saying nine unit minus 12 is six parts, we will form the equation six parts plus 12 equals to nine units, okay? Why? Because Okay, now I have a positive number. That will be a lot easier to deal with. Secondly, you can say that Paul has six parts because he used 12 stickers. The original amount must be Richard's portion, which is nine units. So you can say that um, by working backwards, you can say that Paul's six part, add back the 12 that he gave to his younger brother, will be Richard's nine units. Okay, so that's one equation. So uh, like I said, 
whenever you have the opportunity to simplify, you always simplify. Okay, so you can see that 6, 12, and 9 has a highest common factor of 3. So you can actually simplify by dividing each item by 3. 6p minus divided by 3 is 2p. Okay, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then 9 divided by 3 is 6, uh, sorry, 3 units. Okay, so everything divided by 3, that is your first equation. Okay, here you have your first equation. You cannot sim you cannot con consider these two as, okay? You cannot consider these two equations as two equations because they are actually one and the same. It's just the second equation is a simplified form of the first equa equation. That is not considered two equations. That's only considered one, okay? So now you need to form another equation, all right? Um, since just now we use the stickers to form the equation, now we use the, bookmarks to form the equation. So you can see that Paul's one part is actually the original amount because the question says that Paul gave 12 stickers to his younger brother. So that means he didn't touch his bookmarks. So Paul's one part must be the original number of bookmarks while Richard's one unit is lacking seven because Richard gave seven bookmarks to his sister. Okay, so the equation that we are going to form now is, like I said, we should Avoid negative numbers. So I will say reaches one unit, add back the seven that he gave to his sister will be equal to that one part of Paul, which is untouched. Okay, so um, you like one unit plus something equals one part because it is the smallest number for units and parts. One unit and one part. Okay, so it can become any number easily. Okay, so that will be a very good equation to use. That will be your second equation. You, okay, that will be your second equation. All right, so there are two ways you can do your algebra. You can either use elimination. Many a times elimination are very useful, but not always can you use elimination. For example, here you cannot use elimination because the parts are on the left-hand side and the units are on the right-hand right, right -hand side for the first equation while the units are on the left-hand side for the second equation and the parts is on the right-hand side for the second equation. So you could rearrange the parts by throwing it over, but that you will give you a negative number. Again, you don't like negative numbers. So if you can't do elimination, that means to take... Um, one equation minus the other, then you do something called substitution. Okay? Substitution. Substitution is, okay, to replace uh, parts with units, okay, or units with parts, depending on which one is more convenient. Okay, so here, you can see that from these two equations, uh, you can see from equation one, here you have two parts, right? All right, and then from equation two here, you have one part. How about I make it two parts by multiplying everything by two? Okay, when I multiply everything by two, I will change the equation to 2u plus 14 is equals to two parts. Okay, why is that useful is this? All right, these two parts over here is also equals to this 2 unit plus 14 over here. Because in this equation, you can see that 2 unit plus 14 is equal to 2 parts. So I can take, okay, whatever that is enclosed in this bracket, okay, and then I will just replace the 2p with 2u plus 14. So why do I do that? When I replace the 2 parts with 2u plus 14, all right, my parts will be gone. I will only be left with units. So if I'm only left with units, I can solve it, right? Okay, so here uh, I will rewrite the equation one. Okay, I will rewrite equation one to 2u plus 14. So instead of 2p, I write 2u plus 14 because they are equal. Okay, then I will continue writing plus four, which is actually from here. Okay, that will be equals to three units. Okay, so you, you can see that 14 plus 4 is actually 1 unit. So 1 unit is actually equals to 
14 plus 4 is 18. All right. So 14 plus 4 is equals to 18. So now you have one unit is equals to 18. You can actually solve um, most of the question. You can solve all, all of the question already with that one unit. Okay, because here you can, you can find out Richard's portion already. So how many stickers did Paul have in the end? So you want Paul stickers. Then you must be thinking, I, uh, um, I should find parts. No. Okay, you, because it's easier to find units, you can just find units. And the parts will come with a minor, one minor step will give you the parts. Okay, remember we said that the stickers that Richard has is the original amount of both Paul and Richard. Okay, so, so this nine unit is the original amount, right? So this six part, okay, is lacking 12, right? So very easy, just find nine units. Minus 12, there will be six parts. All right, that is what uh, that is what A is asking for. Okay, so now I will continue with this. Nine units will be equal. Okay, now we are trying to find um, Richard's part, which is actually what Paul had at first. Right, so 18 times nine. All right, that will be 100 and uh, nine times eight is 72, 162. Okay, so 162 is actually 9 units. So we will take 162 minus 12 because we know that Paul's portion here is lacking 12. Okay, that will give you the answer for A, which is uh, the number of stickers Paul had in the end, which is 150. That will be the answer for A. Okay, so for B, okay, let me move this somewhere else. Okay, so now for B, How many bookmarks did Richard buy? All right, how many bookmarks did Richard buy? So book, uh, this is a bit more tricky because the bookmarks that Richard buy is not just belonging to Richard. It actually belongs to Paul as well. Can you, can, if you can recall that the question said, Richard bought some bookmarks and gave half of them to Paul. So not only must you find what Paul has, you have to double it times two. Okay, because um, Richard bought all of them and shared it equally with Paul. All right, so how many bookmarks did Richard buy? So now you can see that Richard's bookmark is one unit and it is lacking seven. So um, it's actually quite simple. One unit you have already found out is 18, right? So 18 plus seven, that will be the number that Richard have at first. And that is also equal to the original amount that Paul has. Okay, so then, of course, he shared equally with Paul, right? So now you multiply by 2, you get the answer for the second one. Okay, so the answer is 50 bookmarks. Alright, so this is a units and parts question. Why don't I use a model method to do this? It's because the model method is exactly the same step as the equation method. But the model method will re uh, require you to do a lot of alignment, do a lot of uh, drawing of multiple sets. Okay, and that will take a lot of time and you will need a lot of rearrangement. You will need a lot of rearrangement, okay, so that your units and your parts align. That is the weakness of a model. Okay, so in P6, when you want to use a model, Usually, it is to deal with differences. Okay, why? Because when you cut, okay, when you have a difference, you cut a model, it is very clear, okay, how the difference changes. So, it is useful in P6, mainly for instances where you have gaps and differences. You are very interested in the difference between two set of models. Okay, for units and parts, models are a bit too slow and too cumbersome and require a lot of accuracy which is quite difficult so it is way better to simply just use two equations all right that is units and parts okay 